Hi, and welcome to our weekly broadcast. My name is Brian Likens, and today I want to challenge you. I want to challenge you to, to take a hold of God's Word, to look into God's Word, and realize who you are and that you have the power and ability to overcome. God has given us uh, provision in His Word. He's given us His Word to help us, to strengthen us, to overcome. And today we're going to look into we're going to look into God's Word and we're going to see the power of it. We're going to see what He says about our situation. We're facing a lot of things. People are facing distresses. They're facing hardships, hard times, struggles, and trials. But in every situation, God has promised us that in every situation we find ourselves in, He is the answer and He is the way out. And He's already provided for us God has given us His Spirit on the inside of us. He's given us power and authority. He's given us the tools and the power to overcome whatever we face, but we have to take a hold of God's Word and we have to trust Him and believe Him. We have to do it His way, not our way. And so we're going to look at a few scriptures today, and I believe that His Word will challenge you. His Word will strengthen you. His Word will cause you if, if you apply it to your life his and, and my life, we, we apply it to our lives and it will cause us to come out of a place. It will cause us to come through a place. It will cause us to overcome in every area and every situation. Let me go ahead and open up with prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, today, Lord, we honor you. We worship you for who you are. Father, we acknowledge you and thank you, Lord God, that you have given us your word. You have provided for us. Lord, you've provided for everything that we have need of. And Lord, we are grateful, we're thankful that we're not doing this on our own. We're not out here trying to make it without you. We're not trying to make it by ourselves. But God, whatever situation that we face, we are not facing this alone. Father, we thank you that your provision, your your supply, God, your resources, everything that that we can, we can tap into into the kingdom. Everything that we have need of, we can tap into, Lord, through your word, by faith, putting our faith and trust in you. And Lord, we thank you for opening up our spiritual eyes, our spiritual ears to hear. Lord, our spiritual understanding, God, giving us that understanding that we need to apply these things to our daily life. And Father, we thank you for it in the name that is above every name, the precious name of Jesus. Amen. In Hebrews eleven six, 6, of course, this is a familiar scripture, but without faith, it is impossible to please God. And I know a lot of people think that, um, think that they don't have faith or they don't have enough faith, but God has given us, God has given to every person the measure of faith. You are not lacking or, or, or missing anything. With, uh, you are not without the ability to come up higher or to overcome in any situation. God has given us everything that we have need of. He's given us what it takes to overcome. There is nothing that that there's nothing that, that we are missing outside of God. It's all provided in and through Him. The only way we miss it is if we don't take hold of it, is if we don't apply it, is if we don't we don't take what God's word says, believe it, and act on it. And God is not keeping things from us, but He's given us His Word to give us the ability to overcome in every situation. So without faith, it is impossible to please God. Without faith, it, you are saved by grace through faith. Everything that, you, everything that you attain through the kingdom is by faith. Everything that you need or require or, or inquire of the Lord, it's all by faith. It's all by trusting. It is all by believing in a God that you cannot see and, and, and uh, that, that is not ma uh, manifested in the natural, walking in the flesh. Jesus is no longer on the earth. You believe in a God that you cannot see. You believe that God is working for you. You believe that God is working things out for your benefit and it all takes faith. It takes faith in putting your trust and belief that God is working for you even when you cannot see it. Even when you don't see Him working it out or you don't see how He's doing it, your faith and your trust is that God is working for me. He's working on my behalf. Having faith in God. What did Jesus tell the disciples all the time? He said, have faith have faith in God, or where is 
your faith. O ye of little faith, why do you not believe? How long will I be with you? Why don't you trust me yet? You know, Jesus never gave them a reason, never gave them a reason to doubt him. But yet every time a situation would come up, it would be, oh, God, help us. What are we going to do? How are we going to get through this? Lord, when they were on the boat and, they, and the, the waves were uproaring and Jesus was asleep and, and they were like, you're going to let us die. You brought us out here to die. Oh, God, we're, Jesus, what are you doing? Why are you, why are you sleeping? Don't you care about us? Of course he cared, but he he knew that he was going to the other side. It didn't matter what happened out there. He was going to the other side. He was not going to drown on a on a, a sea that day. His life was already planned out. He knew where he was headed. He knew what was going to happen. But the disciples, again, what did he say to him? Oh, ye of little faith. Why didn't you speak to the wind and the waves? Why don't you declare what in your life? Why don't you speak to your circumstances, your situations? Why don't you take your faith in God and say, enough is enough, devil. No longer, no more are you going to destroy or to rob from me or to steal from me. No longer are you going to rob from my family. No longer are you going to steal from my family. These are the things, these are the responses to, to whenever... Uh, the, the enemy comes at us with thoughts or the enemy comes at us with feelings or emotions. These are the way we, we are to respond. We are to respond in an act of faith in declaring that God is changing the situation and He's given us the authority. He's given us the power to change our situation with the power of our words. He's given us the authority of His word to stand against the, the enemy. What does the Bible say? To resist the devil and he will flee. Submit yourself, therefore, unto God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. He didn't say that he might flee. You submit, humble yourself before the Lord. Submit yourself to him. Resist the devil. Stand firm against him. Don't allow him to, to, to push you back. Stand against whatever he's, the opposition is, whatever the thought is, whatever the, the feeling is, whatever the fear is, whatever the emotion is. You stand firm against it. You declare that he, you are overcoming. You're the overcomer. You have the power. You have the authority that God is on your side. And devil, you are a liar. Whatever Satan is whispering in your ear, it's a lie. It may be laced with a little bit of truth, but it is a lie. It's full of deception. Those, those whispering thoughts that come in your mind that, that, that try to torment you through the night or when you get ready to lay down or, or when you get up and you feel fear on you. I'm on, I want to tell you the Holy Spirit is not overshadowing you with fear. The Holy Spirit is not overshadowing you or, or tormenting you with a fear trying to, trying to move you throughout that day or to keep you from something or to move. No, the Holy Spirit speaks to you from, from within from on the inside, but he is not manipulating you or moving you or motivating you by fear. Those thoughts of fear are from the enemy. And in First uh, Peter, let's go ahead and go to First Peter five seven. In First Peter five seven, I'm gonna and I'm gonna read it in a in a couple of different translations here. But in the in the uh, in the King James, it says, "Humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, that He may exalt you in due time." Verse seven, casting all your care upon Him, because He cares for you. Be sober and watchful because your adversary, the devil, walks around as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. But resist him firmly in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are experienced by your brotherhood throughout the whole world. But after you've suffered for a little while, the God of all grace who has called us to his eternal glory through Christ Jesus will restore, support, strengthen, and establish you. Now let me read this in a, in another translation here. In the uh, in the Amplified version, and it says uh, it says this about um, after you have suffered for a little while, the God of all grace, who imparts all blessing and favor, who has called you to His own eternal glory in Christ Jesus, with Himself. Complete and make you what you ought to be, establish and ground you securely and strengthen and settle you. After that you've suffered for a little while, after, now listen, don't, don't be freaking out here. 
the uh, in the message translation, message translation says the suffering won't last forever. It won't be long before this generous God who has great plans for us in Christ, eternal and glorious plans they are, will have put together and will have put have you put together and on your feet for good. The suffering won't last forever. It won't be long before this generous God who has great plans for us in Christ, eternal and glorious plans they are, will have you put together and on your feet for good. It won't last long. That's one of the lies of the enemy is that, you know, what you're going through is never going to end. What you're going through is never going to change. It's never going to get better or it's only going to get worse. There's no way out of this situation. There's no way uh, around it. There's no way through it. The devil is a liar and all he has to use is whispering, deceiving, lying, troubling, tormenting thoughts. All he has is to whisper lies, whisper rejections, whisper torment, whisper fear. All he can do is nag, 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 and try to get us just like a fish that's that, that, that you go out fishing and you got a bait on there and you're trying to find the right bait to hook them and to, and to snag that fish. You're trying to find the right bait to catch, catch that fish. You're trying to find the right lure that'll get that fish to bite. And all Satan's doing is whispering, trying to, to, to figure out what is going to trigger you, what it's going to take to get you to bite on the lie, what it's going to take to get you to latch down on that and get hooked. And then he's going to try to snag you. Now, it ain't over. Even if you've been hooked, it ain't the end. Glory to God. The line can still be cut. <laughs> the line can still be broken. And thank God for the power of Jesus Christ and the power of that name. But recognizing the lures and the bait of the enemy, recognizing how Satan lures and, and tries to, to, to uh, distract us or to pull us away from the truth of God's word and who he is. It's, you know, just be, uh, above that, it says, cast all your care upon him for he cares for you. You ca casting that care upon the Lord is just like, uh, just like casting, putting that, taking, take, literally taking it off of you and placing it upon him. Taking the weight, the burden, the pressure, all of the, all of the responsibility, all of the weight, all of that burden, taking and lifting it off of you and placing it upon him. And he literally carries it, literally carries the weight and the burden, just like a pack mule would take your weight or your, your, uh, whatever your, you need, the, the load that you need carried, placing it upon that, 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 uh, that, that, uh, they call it a beast of burden. And I'm not calling G Jesus a pack mule or, or a donkey or a mule. No, he is, but he, that mule is designed to carry a weight that the human body is not created to carry. And that's what Christ is saying. It's that same type or shadow of, that you are not able to carry this, but Jesus is saying, I am. Jesus is saying, I'm able to carry the weight. I'm able to carry the burden and it won't bother me. You know, when they put that, when they, you see a pack mule carrying a load, that pack mule goes on and he, about his day and he goes on just like as if it ain't nothing. Just like if it was, this is what I was designed to do. This is what I was created to do. It's not hard on, yeah, it's, it's, it's a exercise for him, I'm sure, but it's not, that the mule doesn't die at the end of the trip because the weight was so heavy that he, that it just broke him down and destroyed him. No, that mule carried the weight, moved on and said, I'll do it again tomorrow. I'll do it again the next day because I'm able to do it. I'm able to carry it. And that is the, 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 the example of what he's saying here of casting your care upon the Lord for he cares for you is taking the weight of that and actually getting it off of you and onto him so that he is able and will carry it and he'll do it again and again and again. God is able and willing to take the weight and the load from us. We don't have to carry it or walk throughout this by ourselves. And he's given us these uh, principles, these, these laws of his word. He's given us these treasures of his word to realize and understand that what we're going through, we're not alone. He has given us the Holy Spirit to live on the inside of us. Dear Lord, we have, we have God living on the inside of us. 
And when we think about that, what? how are you going to go down? How is the ship going down with God on the inside? How is the ship going down? What kind of pressure or problem can you find yourself in that God is not able to overcome or to or, or to, to to get out of? What kind of problem could we ever be in that God himself is not able to take care of? You know, uh, I've heard one minister say, that's why we bow our head because we're, <laughs> we're talking to the Lord because he's on the inside. That's why you bow your head to pray, Lord Jesus, you live inside me. He lives on the inside of us by the Holy Spirit. The power that is on the inside of us, the power on, on, of the, the Spirit of the living God, the Bible says it's the same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead lives and dwells in you. That very same life-changing power, the very same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead lives and dwells in us. So how in the world is this ship going to be destroyed or go down when God, it, God is in it? Listen, we've got to realize who we are. We've got to realize the power that we carry on the inside, the power of, of the Godhead that is in us, the power of the, the, the creative power of this whole universe living and dwelling on the inside of us. That right there should make us realize that whatever problem we face, it's not going to be there long. You know, Jesus, Jesus wasn't without facing situations. He wasn't without facing uh, trials and tests and persecutions and and when he walked the earth, he faced all, all kinds of things. But whatever situation he found himself in, it he was always victorious, even to the cross or even to death. He was still victorious. All of that was the, the plan of God for our salvation to deliver us. And he rose from the dead on the third day. Glory to God. If he hadn't come out of that grave, then you could say that, you know, that it didn't work. But that it was is powerless. But he broke the power of death, hell, and the grave. Ro rose up out of that grave to give us freedom and power and overcoming sustainability, overcoming power. He come up out of that grave to, and and broke the chains of death, hell, and the grave and the power of Satan over us. And when we look at that, look at what Christ did for us. Realize that He lives in us. That whatever situation I find myself in, I'm looking to the inside. I'm looking that Jesus, you're the source, you're the answer. And whatever I'm facing, it's not going to last long because the problem is going to be destroyed. Whatever the problem is, even if it's death, death cannot keep us. Death is, death is temporary for us. It, this, there is the, because we are an eternal being. We have been given the, the keys to the kingdom. We have been given eternal life. So it is only temporary. Whatever happens in this earth is only going to last a little while. And, and it seems like forever when we face situations, the things that we find ourselves in, it seems like that it is an eternity because we may be, you know, especially if we're, we're trying to figure it out or we're trying to work it out. We're trying to do this on our own. We're trying to, uh, you know, we're trying to get through a, maybe a long process. There are some people that, that have been facing, uh, court cases that, la that that drag out and drag out. And you know, many times that's on purpose. That's a tactic because if they can wear the other person down, if they can wear them down by keep deliberating and keep keep going back and forth, back and forth and keep keep uh, keep it ongoing that somebody's going to run out of money and whoever has the most money usually wins. You know, that, there's a tactic that they, those things they do. And there's a tactic of the enemy to wear us down to get us to stop believing and trusting in the Lord, to get off of our faith, to stop looking at God's Word, to say it doesn't work. Well, I've been saved, you know, for 20, 30 years, and, and it's, and it, you know, I guess it was all for nothing. That is a lie from the devil. That is a lie from the pit of hell to say that it doesn't work or that God is not working. And I want to tell you, anytime that the Word, the, anytime it seems like the Word doesn't work, it's not on God's end. It is on our end. Anytime that the word, it seems like the word is not changing something. If it, if it, uh, if, if it's the results aren't there, it's either it, it's being worked out or it's there's something that we're not applying or something that we're not, we're, we're at fault at. It's not God. It's not on God's fault. His word is perfect and true and his word is pure and holy and his word works every time. The Bible says that his word will not return void. God's word will not uh, 
come back without producing the result that it was sent forth to do. When God created the universe, the scientists are still discovering and finding out the universe is still expanding. The universe is still developing and growing. When God said, light be that power of that creative ability, that creative light, when God spoke in the stars in the, into, the, into the, uh, the universe and into the space, the, the, the lights to be in the firmaments in the heavens, when God commanded that to be, it's still growing. His word is still working and performing. It's even holding, it's held our, our world into the perfect state that, that it, if it turned just a little bit off, off of its axis, we would all die. If it slowed down, if the earth slowed down a little bit, we'd be crushed because of the gravity. If it sped up, we'd be flung off of the earth. God has created it perfectly, and by His Word, the very moment that He spoke it, and it began to, that the world began to spin, it has stayed in that perfect state from the very time that God spoke that Word. And His Word is still working. Like I said, the scientists have, have discovered that the universe is still, it, it's, the, <laughs> they don't know how it works or what's happening, but every time they look, for, they, they look a little bit further, they're like, wow, the universe is even further than we thought. It's still growing and growing and growing and continuing. God's Word will not return void. Whatever God has spoken, whatever God has said, whatever we can stand on in God's Word, it is faithful. God's word is not uh, 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 fallible. It's not something that that uh, like what man makes that crumbles and falls apart. God's word will stand. And if he said, submit yourself to God, resist the devil, and he will flee, then that's exactly what will happen. If we submit to God, submit ourselves to him, we resist the devil, he doesn't have a chance but to get out of our life. He doesn't have a chance but to stop the work. Whatever he's tormenting you with, whatever he's fighting against you with, whatever he's he's coming at you with, with torment or fear or with depression or, or, or whether your family life, whether your job, whatever's going on, the, the Spirit of God will lead you into that right answer. And when you submit yourself to the Lord, resist the devil, he doesn't have a choice but to get the heck out of your life. And that's putting in PG. He can, he can go back to where he came from. He can get out of your life absolutely, completely away. The devil doesn't have a choice but to turn and run and flee. The only, the only way that he has power is when he can roll over top of us because we lay down or we give up the fight or we stop speaking God's word. Don't stop declaring what you have believed for. Don't stop declaring because it's been a while or, it's, or, or because you haven't seen the results. Don't stop declaring who God is in your life and that you are a child of the Most High God. Even if you don't feel like you're saved, if you don't feel like that, that you have the, you know, that you've, you've been good enough or you, you're looking at your own failure, failures, you're looking at your mistakes. Cast all that upon Him. Cast all of the past, all of the weight, all of the criticism, all of the, the rejection, all of the fear, all the torment. Cast it over on Him and see and watch God move on your behalf. Cast it off. Roll it over onto Him. And when you do, don't go trying to, to grab it back. You know, the, the thing that we do is, We'll, we'll get up, we'll walk the floor, we'll worship the Lord, we'll pray a little bit, and we're like, wow, this is great. And then the next thing, another thought will come, and it'll try to hit us again. And then the next thing we know, we're thinking about you know, how bad it is or how it's not going to work, or, or, or maybe we messed up, maybe we blew it. Listen, we're not the ones that are faithful, but God is faithful. God knew that we weren't faithful. God knew that we weren't faithful all the time. He's not doing it or working on your behalf because of your faithfulness. He's doing it and working when you believe the Word of God and when you declare the Word of God because of His faithfulness, because of His commitment to His Word. He, the Word doesn't work because you're pure and holy on your own or because, you're, you, know, because you never make a mistake or you never fail. The Word isn't pure and, 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 and it works because of your, you know, your righteousness or how good you have have uh, stayed in the faith or how long you've been in the faith or how long you've studied the word or how long you've prayed. 
It's not, it doesn't work because of our faithfulness, but it works because of His, because He is faithful and His Word will not return void. When we declare, when we stand on His Word, something has to move. It doesn't have a choice. It's like taking a hammer to something. If I take a hammer to something, and it may be hard, it may be very difficult to break through, but I promise you, if I keep hammering at it, eventually something's going to give. Eventually it's going to break loose. Eventually it's going to, it's going to bust loose and begin to, begin to cave in and begin to fall. If I took a, a brick wall and I begin to hammer at it, little chipping away, it looks like, you know, it's only taking little chips out of it. It's only, <laughs> I'm not doing very much here. But I promise you, if I keep hammering at it, if I keep hammering at it and I keep hammering at it, that hammer is stronger than a brick. And that hammer is going to keep chipping away until eventually I got a hole in that wall. And I can keep doing it until I could take the whole wall down or the whole house down with a hammer. It might take a while, but I promise you it'll come down. It will come down. So whatever, whatever is going on, whatever you're dealing with, putting the word to it, putting God's word to it and applying it and standing in faith, believing and trusting God, declaring over your situation that you are an overcomer, that God is greater, that nothing in this world is more powerful, nothing in this world can overcome God, nothing in this world is greater than He is, and you keep hammering at it, you keep declaring whatever the, whatever has, has the Lord has put on the inside of your spirit. If He's given you a promise of your family, of your children coming to the Lord, of, uh, uh, of salvation, if He's given you a promise, you know, you have the promise of healing, whatever you're standing on, whatever you're facing, you keep hammering at it with the Word of God. How do you do that? You keep going and you get another scripture. You get another scripture. You find another scripture. You keep digging. You keep researching. And when you find the scriptures and you begin to apply them to it, you begin to declare them out of your mouth. And out of your mouth is like a hammer taking a chip at it. Out of your mouth, one more, one more, another word of God. Devil, you're a liar. You're not going to destroy my family. You're not taking my family. You're not taking me out of this world. You're not destroying my career. You're not destroying my family finances. You're not destroying my household. You're not stealing and robbing from me. You're not going to keep me in poverty. You're not going to keep me in sickness. You're not going to keep me in lack. You're not going to steal my joy. You're not going to rob my happiness. You're not going to rob from me anymore. I stop it today in Jesus name. And you keep hammering at it and you keep hammering at it. You keep declaring what the Lord has promised and it will eventually crumble and come down. And just like he said here, and I'm going to read it again to you, just like he said here um, in, in 1 Peter, the suffering won't last forever. It won't be long before this generous God who has great plans for us in Christ, eternal and glorious plans they are, will have you put together and on your feet for good. The end result is you win. The end result is that you are victorious. The end result is that you are overcoming in this situation because your faith and your trust is in the Almighty God. It's not in yourself. Your faith and trust is in that He is holy, He is righteous, and He is pure, and He has given us His righteousness. He has made me righteous. He has made me holy. He has made me pure. He has made me clean. He has done that through the power of His blood. And I can stand before my Heavenly Father without fear because I'm standing in His righteousness that He has bestowed upon me, that He's given me through the gift of salvation. He is, it's like Him taking the robe and wrapping it around me. And when I walk to my Heavenly Father, I'm, I'm, I'm wearing a robe of righteousness and it belongs to me. I didn't earn it. I didn't deserve it, but it belongs to me because of what Jesus did. And I'm so grateful and thankful. So stay in faith. Don't give up and don't quit. And let me end this in prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for, for causing, Lord, whatever situation people find themselves in, Lord God, that the enemy be destroyed in the name of Jesus. And they declare, Lord God, they declare your righteousness. They declare who they are. They have the right to the kingdom. They're heirs to the throne. And Father, we thank you. The name that's above every other name in the name of Jesus. Amen.